welcome, welcome. I have to run and get some um, cabbage. I need cabbage for the cauliflower. Like, that's what coleslaw is. It's cabbage. <laughs> so you can't have coleslaw without your cabbage. <laughs> I have plenty of lettuce, though. <laughs> And really, okay, so this, so I'm going to let y'all see this, this big giant pack. So this is my, my chicken breast. I'm not sure what chicken they got these off of, but uh, maybe they had like implants or something. I don't know. But these are some giant chicken breasts. And uh, they're still slightly frozen in the middle. I took them out at like, I don't know, six something this morning. And um, I'm only going to need like one of these anyway. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it. Okay, so yeah, it's still it's still very frozen, as you can see, it's still very hard. But because we have to get the potatoes in the oven first, because uh, oven baking the potatoes first actually makes them soft enough to use um, for the mashing, so it makes it easier to mash, easier to handle, and easier to peel. So what I'm going to do with my chicken, I'm going to put it in a bowl of cool water. Don't put your chicken in hot water because that's that's not sanitary. So put it in, I'm gonna put it in a bowl with some cool water to let it thaw while we're doing the other stuff. So today we're doing our lunch recipe with our crispy chicken so you can oven you can oven fry the chicken so if you oven fry the chicken sorry i got like leftover lip stain <laughs> so if you oven fry the chicken you actually won't um you won't need uh much oil to to cook it um so it's better than deep frying it because deep frying it will actually leave you with a lot of uh extra calories from the grease so no matter what oil you use like no matter how healthy it is how good the fats are and all of that stuff in it it still has a lot of calories so uh if you're not as active you definitely want to watch your calorie intake because calories become fat even if they don't start out as fat and the fat is, i mean and the calories and oil is directly from the fat content so uh fat is just another source of energy obviously but uh And so, with that going, so we're going to start with preheating our oven to, I believe it was 400 degrees. Let me double check on that temperature and make sure. So, the, oh, I didn't finish saying the whole rest. So, the whole meal that we're making today is lunch and it's going to be crispy chicken lettuce wrap with a red cabbage coleslaw or red cabbage and carrot coleslaw and a uh sweet potato well like a mashed sweet potato but the way i'm going to make them they're going to end up being like little like little dollop puffs or something like something you know it's gonna look cute but essentially it's sweet potato mashed sweet potato and um potatoes are actually a very uh healthy complex carbs so you know people say don't don't uh stack up on potatoes like yeah you don't want to only eat potatoes you don't want you know your potatoes to be too large of a portion of your meal um but they are a very healthy source of energy carbs and um they also have uh other like vitamins and minerals in them that are uh that are helpful to you as well so don't you know don't x the potatoes out of your diet just because you're trying to lose weight uh in some of the more recent research I've been doing for uh, things uh, concerning that is that the most important thing about your calorie intake and your carbohydrates is the source of those calories and carbs. So you don't want your source to be, you know, uh, processed, sugary, um, you know, high salt, high sodium type uh, sources. You want it to be from healthy foods like your vegetables. Vegetables have carbs. Uh, fruits have carbs, especially your corn, your uh, uh, potatoes, very starchy. So those, but those are healthy sources of carbs and rice. 
different types of rice. So you want the least processed uh, rice uh, grains like quinoa and things like that. All of those have carbs and they, but they are a complex uh, carbs. So they have uh, more than uh, just the sugary, you know, uh, situation going on with them. They tend to have a lot of other very beneficial nutrients for your body. So that being said, pulling up. Good All right. Oh, that's not what I was looking for. Hmm. Oh, there it is. I'm going to scroll past it. So, yes, for the potatoes, it is 400 degrees for it. See, I have it. So, your oven should be on and heating up, and I'm already kind of hot because I, I decided to wear a sweater today, of all things. <laughs> so, we got our oven on, and for the sweet potatoes, you are not going to peel them or anything. You're just going to rinse them, scrub the outside, and then wrap them in foil, poke it with a fork, and put them in the oven so that they can cook. And I'm not sure if, if you've had like a, a bad experience with sweet potatoes or sweet potato pie, but uh, if you've seen like sweet potato pie that has like those fibers or something in it, that's why, because they didn't bake the sweet potatoes first. So if you bake the sweet potatoes, it, it doesn't make it uh, separate into those uh, fibers. And so, um, yeah, boiling boiling won't do it. Sorry. Or if you do boil, you have to boil it for a very long time. So it's better to just bake it first and then, you know, it, it, it keeps it copacetic. So these are going to have to bake for a while. So these are going to be the last thing that we're going to prepare because they're pretty much going to have to bake the whole time that we're cooking in order for it to... Uh, completely do what we needed to do so i'll bring you over here so i'm just you know just leave you i'm not just i'm not gonna just leave you <laughs> so i'm rinsing off my potatoes so you always want to rinse yourself it doesn't matter even if you say it's pretty clean just like it. a little bit of water won't hurt And get my foil together. So here I'll change it down. Yeah, I'm sorry because usually I have like my laptop, so I'm not like having to move the the camera and the, the view around a lot. But I have I have to get a new uh I have to get a new charger because my laptop isn't charging properly. So I'm not able to, to come with all the nice little different angles, but you know, I love y'all and y'all love me, so we're here making it work. <laughs> so, like I say, you just, just wrap it in foil, and then I'm going to get a fork. And you want it to ventilate because if you don't, um, the potato can have some situation in there. <laughs> so it just, it just helps it, you know, ventilate. So nothing fancy, just something to hold it off the rack. Because I mean, even with that, you could even potentially just set them on the rack because they're already wrapped in foil. So I'm just putting it in the pan so that I can just pull them all out at the same time. You know, same time, just for convenience. It's not for any specific reason. Okay. And just while I'm doing this, so I know uh, y'all hear uh, our recreator of uh, Miss Selena uh, talking about the cafe. So, like the actual physical building that we are uh, in the process of of making a reality. So um, you can definitely reach out to me or her, or if you're if you're uh, in contact with any of the other uh, Rock Truth family, you can reach out to them, and they will get uh, us in touch with you if you want to donate to uh, to that. Um, you can also email us at Rock Truth uh, Radio. Is that right? Yeah, Rock Truth Radio 
zero two at gmail.com. Is it? I have to double check that email, but I will definitely post it in our Facebook community. So if you're not a part of our Facebook community, join in. Especially uh so our Rock True Queens community. We we post uh, a lot of stuff daily and we also ask for you know, interaction and your thoughts on different things. And, you know, of course, Rock True Cafe. Oh, and so this is what I'm sipping right now. This is my ginger ale. Remember, I made ginger ale last week. Uh, I was a chef for 20 years between Texas and Louisiana, Cajun all the way, soul food as well. That sounds amazing. Um, This right here, though. So all I did was I, I had some frozen raspberry juice, and I just dropped a couple of chips in my... Uh, my ginger ale and some mint leaves and it look it looks so snazzy like you know mm, sipping but yeah this is just my little pick me up so we got the potatoes in the oven and we're gonna go ahead and get the coleslaw going so i have my red cabbage and a carrot and we're going to need a lemon for the lemon juice and then my my apple cider vinegar so I like uh, the Bragg brand but you know you can pretty much use any type of apple cider vinegar that you uh, you know that you prefer if you don't normally use it then anything will do so this is just for to help with the acidity for the um, sauce for our coleslaw and we're going to have our Dijon mustard, just something I grabbed. I don't even know. I don't know this brand. It might be a brand name. I wouldn't know because I don't normally eat Dijon mustard. <laughs> this is solely for the purpose of this recipe. And then uh, with this one, so you can either, the honey in, in this cold claw is optional. So you can, uh, you don't have to add the honey, but if you wanted to have a sweeter flavor, I would suggest the honey. So I have my honey here. You can even substitute in like any type of other like sweetener if you, if you really want to, uh, like maple syrup or uh, agave syrup. Um, hey, Ty. Okay. Now I like me Louisiana cooking. Yes, I actually... Uh, that's where I tried a uh, fried alligator, and it was delicious. It tastes kind of like chewy chicken, so um, with a slightly, um, and it doesn't taste fishy like how you would think it would taste because, you know, they're amphibian, they live in water and stuff like that. You would think it would have, like, kind of like that, that type of flavor, but it doesn't. It tastes mostly like chicken, and really the texture is what's uh, more different, um, but it was good. And uh, our garlic. We don't need a lot, just the clove, just a little bit for some, for some flavor, put some flavor on it. <laughs> and our olive oil. So I I keep some olive oil in a little bottle. This is actually a soy sauce bottle. I know you see the little the little symbol, <laughs> and I just uh, repurposed it to hold my olive oil so I can have a nice easy way. To uh, dispense it for when I'm doing stuff like this, because we buy it, we buy it in like the gallon can, so we got like this giant can of olive oil, and I'm not gonna be trying to sip that every time I need just like a little bit, because it could cause problems. <laughs> and uh, vanilla extract. Let me get my little box. My little box of my pure pure vanilla extract. And I think that was everything. Yep. Dijon vinegar, mm, mm, mm. boom. And so now we are ready to get our coleslaw going. So, first things first, I thought we all came to put the chicken in. Okay, that was turning. So, first, we're going to. Hmm, that's still a pretty good roll, but whatever. It's got a lid. So I'm using a bowl with a lid because we are going to have to put this to the side and let it, uh, you know, sit and simmer and refrigerate. But this is like, uh, I don't know, this is a pretty big, pretty big bowl. So um, 
I don't I don't know the volume. <laughs> but it's it's the it's the second it's the the next bowl down from the largest bowl size. If you have like a set of bowls, that's what this one will be. So I'm just going to set this to the side. Once again, we rinse our rinse and clean our produce. So I'm going to rinse the cabbage and the carrots. I broke my carrot rinsing it. <laughs> We're gonna rinse the lemon too. Yes, even the lemon, because when you cut it and all that stuff, you know, you can drag the the stuff from the outside of the lemon into the part that you're actually going to be eating. And you don't want to do that. Right. So we got. So now we have clean cabbage. Now I'm not like I'm not the the best at like prepping and cutting stuff because I like to just get stuff done so I mean that's probably like a better technique than how I'm how I'm about to do this cabbage so uh the the 20 year chef might have to uh send me some some pointers on how to actually do this but so the idea is we're just gonna um get the cabbage shredded so uh my thing is I'm just gonna end up doing it the lazy way I'm gonna cut this in half I'm going to cut the uh, the end off, and then I'm just going to use a cheese grater <laughs> and grate it. And that's that's how I'm going to do the carrot as well. So I'm not doing nothing uh, fancy or, or different. Where's my peeler? I'm going to peel this outside off of the carrot. That's, that's about it for the carrot. That's the outside. <laughs> And then once I do that, I'm going to grate it. But I'm going to grate it on top of the uh, the cabbage. So once I get the cabbage all shredded up, <clears throat> then I'm going to grate my carrot into the bowl. I don't even know if, if, if the order of operation matters for that. But for me, in my head, that's the proper way to do it. <laughs> okay. My little broken carrot. So that is that. We clear these scraps away. And we actually have a lemon juicer. Well, a, 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 citrus, a citrus juicer. So if you don't have a, a juicer or some, or some type of uh, apparatus like this, uh, you could use a warm lemon because it actually makes it uh, releases juice easier. So uh, if you know that you're going to make something like this ahead of time, you can leave your lemon out uh, so that until it's room temperature and then that'll actually make the, uh, the juice come out of the lemon more. So you can actually get more juice out of a warm lemon than you will out of a cool lemon. But if you have a juicer like this, it makes it easier to force, you know, force all of it out of the pulp. And... Now we're just going to start going through. So I'm going to cut this lemon first. And we're just going to set the pieces over here on the juicer until we're ready to do that. I don't know why this is moving around like this. It wasn't doing it before. And then we're going to, because, okay, this, is, this cabbage is very hard. So we're going to be as careful as possible. Although, you know what? Cause I don't even really, really bother with cutting it, so we just gonna we gonna put it on the flat box. We just gonna go right to grating it. Hold on, right into this bowl. See, we just saved the step. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, so we're just grating it. And um. Really, all this, like, breaking down your cabbage, all that's going to do is just affect the texture of your coleslaw. So if you like your coleslaw, like, uh, chunkier or thicker, then you would actually have to cut your, uh, your cabbage into the thickness of the slices or pieces that you want. So this is what this is creating here. So I actually don't mind it being um, a finer texture because uh, I'm not a coleslaw eater anyway. 
<laughs> so the red cabbage corn coleslaw is about as close as you're going to get me to coleslaw. And then it has to be like, I prefer it homemade. Like, I don't do the store-bought coleslaw or any of that. My mom loves coleslaw, like, loves it. But I can't I can't get with it, not, not that easily. So I prefer to do it like this. And um, the fine, for me, the finer, the better. And um, like I said, also, this just makes the whole process easier. So you're not going through and having to cut, you know, cut so much. It's actually getting through it pretty quickly. And like I said, I like the fineness of it. And so actually, we can finish taking this outer layer off. I'll probably find something to do with that. I might uh, just incorporate this into my uh, my wrap to make it pretty. <laughs> Because it's, it's, it's uh, they call it red cabbage, but it's, it's more of a purplish color. It looks purple, but the, um, the coloring, the reason why the cabbage is this color is actually a red, uh, um, antioxidant. So, uh, the different things and plants and fruit that give them their colors tend to be an antioxidant like carrots have beta carotene and also a different type of chlorophyll and things like that and that's what gives vegetables and fruits such a wide variety of coloration and also the colors actually determine the type of uh not just antioxidants but vitamins and minerals and like other things that that we probably haven't even found out about these you know plants and things that uh, give them those specific properties to, you know, to that group of plants. And um, hopefully, if I remember, I will actually share uh, these, uh, they're kind of like, um, you know, the little memes and charts and stuff, where they show you how the different colors of the fruits and vegetables actually correlate with the different uh, body systems and organs that they uh, are, are healthy for. We have a fish market here in Indianapolis with the bomb coleslaw. <laughs> but that's normally what you would eat coleslaw with. So it makes sense that if they're selling fish, you know, they're going to sell you the, uh, the thing that goes with it. And, and it kind of tastes good. Otherwise, it's not going to go. <laughs> so the prep. Really, the, yeah, the prep of this uh, meal is probably like the most tedious part, which is, uh, I would say it's probably like one of the bigger barriers for a lot of people to, um, to, eating, to eating healthier and eating more, more vegetables and things like that. So, uh, so I would say the, the more you do it, the less it'll bother you. So for me, when I first started, yeah, this, this stuff like this is kind of, you know, tedious and boring and it made me want to do it less but i just kind of powered through it because i knew the benefits that i was getting from doing it. so and then eventually it just became you know like oh well la 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 la, la. <laughs> prepping my vegetables da 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 da, da. <laughs> And I love like these cheese grater things because this is pretty much how I prep like the majority of like my smaller vegetables too. Like radishes, I use this for uh, my radishes. Uh, you can do onions like this. You can do obviously you know your carrots, uh, squash. Oh, cauliflower. This is pretty much how you make cauliflower rice. So I finally had uh, some cauliflower rice and I made it from scratch. It was actually um, a blue apron recipe that I had gotten. And um, it was so easy to make. Like I was just shocked, you know, at how easy it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, why haven't I been doing cauliflower rice? <laughs> 
So literally all you do for cauliflower rice is this. You grate it on a cheese grater and then you paint, you can uh, saute it in a pan with a little bit of olive oil and like whatever seasoning you want to put on it and boom, you got cauliflower rice. <laughs> like, so simple. And the reason why uh, people will substitute cauliflower rice for uh, for actual rice is because it's lower in, uh, in carbs and starch, sugar, calories, all of that. So, um, like I said, if, you're, if, if your main goal is to lose weight, then you would want to reduce your calorie intake as, uh, as much as possible, but, uh, you know, but within a healthy range. So in doing that, it's, it's better to make uh, smaller toy, you know, smaller changes with what you would normally do. So if you like, you know, uh, chicken and rice, then you know just substitute your rice for cauliflower rice, and then you know you've already made a healthier choice in doing it. So you know, a uh, uh, health overhaul doesn't have to happen overnight. You don't have to knock out all of your favorite fruit foods and stuff, you know, right away. But you should definitely. Uh, look to making healthier uh choices uh along with the the mindset of change so i would say that, that was my my greatest asset in my personal uh weight loss journey was just keeping an open mind and like looking for ways to to change update or add some type of healthy option to what i was already doing because uh my my fate one of my favorite uh motivational speakers eric thomas you know has the same way he talks about habit stacking so it's like it's something that you already do you do it well you do it often you do it consistently and then you just stack another habit on top of it like like uh i think the example he gave was like getting degrees like you're already conditioned for school because you know you went to school you went to high school and then you decide to go to college and get a bachelor's you go and get your master's your PhD, that's habit stacking so you know and now i have this nice and fine so this is actually pretty fine for coleslaw but like i said as far as for me this is perfect so um that's the great thing about cooking is you can make it to how you like it that's why i prefer to cook my own food because then i don't have to get you know the standard what what normal people normally you know how they normally eat it that's how i i'm forced to eat it if that's not how i would normally you know eat it for me so cooking is a personal experience and and the more personal you make it the better it tastes. <laughs> so now we're going to do the same thing with the carrots. And you see, I'm not like stressing over how it's looking or turning out or like none of that. Like just, just get it graded down. <laughs> like the key is to get it into your body. <laughs> Okay, you gotta wash the knuckles. <laughs> and this actually is so pretty and it's so colorful. And that's why I like the uh, the red cabbage coleslaw because it's just really nice to look at too. It looks good on your plate. And um, like I said, the, uh, the, the other side of the uh, nutrients that you get from it is, uh, is also a nice little switch up. Because cabbage is healthy <clears throat> as is. It's healthy you know, within itself, but like I said, the difference in the color introduces introduces a different set of nutrients. So that's why it's, it's important to not just eat white potatoes, like go and try the different varieties. You know, they got butter potatoes, red potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, potato potatoes. <laughs> so, you know, try, try them all, like try all of them. And um, you'll... Uh, the fresher the foods are that you eat the uh, more you'll realize that even things within the same like group tend to have different flavors so red cabbage doesn't taste the same as white cabbage at least not to me and um you know obviously sweet potatoes have a different flavor from you know any other potato but uh red potatoes taste differently they cook they cook up differently like they tend to fry uh, a crispier and browner 
uh, than like a white potato would. Butter potatoes actually make better mashed potatoes because they're uh, softer. So um, when you go into, you know, the world of vegetables and fruits and stuff, and, you know, you realize that there's actually different varieties for, for a reason, especially because we've been controlling how they grow and, you know, what properties and stuff they have. So the cultivation of, of those vegetables was for a purpose. And um, when you use them for their purpose, a lot of times it makes cooking easier. <laughs> So you see that that looks wonderful and colorful and that's just uh, one head of cabbage and one carrot. I might add another carrot. I don't know. We'll see. But I think this this might be good enough once I uh, mix it all the way through. So I don't know. I might do one more carrot. But the, uh, the other carrot I have is really big. So I probably should have just did the big carrot, but whatever. It's all going down the same way. Bye, right. So I'm getting this stuff everywhere. <laughs> so this is what it looks like all hand mixed. So I got a couple of chunks that fell off while I was grating it, but it's all right. So that's what it looks like all mixed up. It already looks so pretty and all of that. And I'm just going to put this to the side. Okay, and now we're just going to get our lemon juice together. So I actually set this to the side so it could kind of warm up a little bit. Because like I said, it's, it's easier to get the juice from a warm, uh, not even really just a warm lemon, like warm citrus fruits tend to uh, give up more of their juice more readily. Because they're, they're tropical fruits. Like, <laughs> that's the whole purpose of putting them in the refrigerator is to stop the, uh, or not stop, but slow the uh the ripening of them and uh because they're like their default is a warmer setting so if you put it in a cooler setting then it's going to slow a lot of its uh cellular processes down so that's why you refrigerate tropical fruit <laughs> plus they tend to taste more refreshing when they're cold but you know outside of that And so this is a lot more, I think I want to say this is probably way more than two tablespoons, but looking at how much cabbage I have, this might be just perfect. So now toss these scraps. Get the scraps out the way. And so really my next step is like to get like have like a personal garden uh space situation going on because then like all of my vegetable and fruit scraps and stuff i can use to make compost for my personal garden so that's going to be fun when that comes along <laughs> and we're gonna get our garlic today. so the garlic has like this little hard piece on the end where it connects with the rest of the clove and i usually just cut that off and it makes it easier to peel and I just peel from from that that part and I keep some fresh garlic around because you can change a whole like a whole meal with some fresh garlic like yeah powder, powdered garlic is cool garlic salt garlic powder all that yeah that's cool and all but ain't nothing like some fresh peeled chopped mint garlic. <laughs> so now we're gonna need a smaller bowl to mix our our Dijon juice. <laughs> and then we're going to mix the garlic so you want it to be small because uh 
I don't know if you ever eaten fresh garlic or bit down on a piece like that wasn't, you know, too small or quite cooked. But garlic has kind of like a spice to it. <laughs> it has a little, a little bit of a bite, you know, to it that you wouldn't really expect. So uh, unless you want to keep hitting that little bite, <laughs> I would suggest you get it uh as small as you can. So all I did there was just cut it into like really thin slices so that it'll make it uh, a smaller uh, mince and it makes it easier to uh, to mince it. So yeah, I know people do it all fast. I don't because I like having fingers and I'm not that skilled and this knife isn't, you know, that necessarily made for that. Like there is like, you know, they have the culinary tools where it's like they have the mincing knives and all that stuff and it's like meant to you know this isn't really meant for this but it gets the job done the garden should be behind the cafe absolutely and we could even do like you could do like a, a garden moat like the whole garden just wraps around the whole cafe and then you know the pretty flowering bushes and stuff could be like in the front so you got you know edible decor <laughs> i like that edible decor <laughs> So that's in there. Then I'm going to get my little measuring cup. So we need one tablespoon. So once again, like I said, I don't really have like, you know, me measuring uh, things. But these are like old scoops from uh, from my supplements. So I just kind of keep them. This is 11 cc's, which is uh, about a tablespoon. <laughs> So uh, we're not, you know, we're not saving lives here. We're not making, you know, nothing that has to be like absolutely, you know, precise. So it works for what I'm, you know, what I'm trying to do here. So this actually, this Dijon, it actually has like real mustard seed. So as you can see, it's like actual mustard seed. That's why I like this. This is going to be so pretty. So pretty. I'm excited. <laughs> so excited. So I'm just taking the scoop. And I'm gonna scoop out my tablespoon. Slap that in there. And with Dijon mustard, it does need to be refrigerated after opening. So make sure you're not leaving your mustard out. Did you know that a lot of those uh, condiments like ketchup and mustard and all that stuff, like people say, leave it in their cabinets, uh, that actually affects the flavor and you know the acidity level of like stuff with tomatoes become acidic after so much time which is why you add a little bit of sugar to your spaghetti because of the acidity yeah that's a tip there and people tend to overdo it with the sugar but you shouldn't taste the sweetness of the sugar when you add it it's just to cut that like the acid taste because it has like a weird like back taste so refrigerate your condiments after you open them if you like them warm you can warm them up on your plate or you know whatever or usually if I put it on my food hot I already know that if I put it on there hot it's going to warm up with the food you know from the, the heat from the food so proper storage of your food actually improves the taste the flavor um avoid helps you avoid certain health risks pathogens all kind of stuff like read the packaging <laughs> it helps <laughs> um so I got garlic clove mints we need a third cup do I have more? Yep. So I actually do use a measuring cup for stuff like this. And once it starts getting to like cup measurements, then I tend to get a little bit more. Um, I can actually use my gallon. So I actually have my, my gallon <laughs> of extra virgin olive oil here. So I'm going to actually uh, use that instead of my little bottle. Because I don't think I don't think there's a third of a cup in that bottle right now. So here... Okay, and then we're gonna fill that. So see, we got our third of a cup, and it goes in the bowl. Yep, that was my uh, my adding olive oil sound effect. Blessings, King James Clark. Thanks for tuning in. Yep, yeah, thank you, Celine, because I can't see uh, everybody's name uh, if they're not. Um, if they don't have stream stream yard uh enabled on their uh device so yes I, i'm assuming that's that's the uh the chef the 20-year chef 
with the soul food and Cajun cooking. You might have to, I'm going to need you to come come and show us something. Give, uh, come do a, a Cajun or soul food recipe because we we are always looking for looking for more taste to eat. <laughs> and then one fourth of a cup. Okay, so a fourth of a cup is slightly less than a third of a cup. I'm going to use the same one and I'm just going to not fill it all the way up. <laughs> you see, there goes my non-precise uh, measuring again. <laughs> So I got my, and then with this, okay, so this is unfiltered. So if you get unfiltered apple cider vinegar, always shake it before you use it because uh, the yeast or, or whatever, the enzymes and all the other stuff that they add to it to, um, you know, turn the, uh, turn the apple juice into uh, this vinegar situation, it settles out. And so to get an even, you know, distribution of solids, just just shake it a little bit. So you see there, it's it's like uh maybe about a half inch from the top, and that's my guesstimation of a fourth of a cup using one third cup measuring. <laughs> so it's not a whole lot of vinegar, like it's just enough that that little that little back pain that. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of lemon juice. And so I'm going to use this uh, thing here just to help rinse out the uh, mustard. So um, that's uh, really why I tend to reuse my measuring things. So I can I can get all, all of my stuff out of it. So that was my one tablespoon and my two tablespoons. And so it's probably like another tablespoon of, of juice from my lemon. So um, I'm going to save this until the end. And then that way I can uh, flavor my uh, my coleslaw. If, it, if I wanted to have a little bit more of a bitterness to it, I can add some of that on top. I can add some of that on my uh, on my chicken, on my lettuce wrap. So I can, you know, sprinkle a little bit, a little bit of that if I want to do that. So uh, lemon juice is a really good uh, garnish um, or accompaniment with a meal because lemon or uh, citrus actually help, uh, helps with digestion. So it helps uh, helps you digest the foods you are eating. So you know if they if if you have lemon you know water with lemon that helps as well. So you know you can enhance the stuff that you already do with healthy stuff that you want to do, <laughs> and that's the best part about being healthy. <laughs> and now we're gonna do so. I actually. I think I have I already have a new bear because <laughs> I was looking at this one. I was like, this one's getting kind of empty. And I, I use honey in a lot of stuff like my tea and all of that stuff. And I tend to uh, substitute sugar uh, for honey. So uh, I use it a lot because um, honey is actually just as sweet, if not uh, sweeter. Um, maple syrup as well is, has a very high sugar content um, per serving. So... Uh, mm, and like I said, that's my one tablespoon. Bloop. And then I'm actually going to just use my finger a little bit. Scoop it out. Scoop it out. Get it in there. And I'm going to use that for the sound. Boom. I don't know if y'all cook with sound effects. I cook with sound effects. Like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Emerald got like, boom. <laughs> and then a fourth of a teaspoon. Um, so basically like a drop, because I don't have nothing to measure that. I don't have a dropper. So if you don't have a dropper, just try just try and have a, a light hand with uh with your try and have a, a light hand with this so I, it's a dark bottle so I can't really see but you just wanna Whoop. and that's it <laughs> uh, that's one fourth of a teaspoon like a drop <laughs> so you don't want you really don't want to overdo that and then we're gonna get a whisk and we're gonna whisk this all together And it's just getting everything 
Blowing and going. Blowing and going. Okay, and then we're going to pour this over our cabbage and carrot. And we're going to, I'm going to just use the fork I, I used to stab the potatoes. And we're going to mix it through. So it doesn't have to be like watery or runny or anything like that. So uh, don't think that you don't have enough. Like, like that's what I was saying. Um, you can, if you have extra stuff left over, you can um, add more later if you wanted to have more, you know, more of that, that flavor. But to me, this is sufficient. And you're going to let it sit so it can soak, you know, soak everything in. And um, the vinegar can uh, kind of start to ferment the uh, cabbage a little bit. And do, 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 do. So, like, the coleslaw that you tend to see in stores is, like, creamier because they use, like, mayonnaise and stuff like that. But guess what? That adds a ton of calories. Like, mayo is, like, super high in fat and calories. So... <laughs> So that's why store-bought coleslaw might not be the best thing for your diet if you're trying to lose weight or you are or you have like a, a health goal, like you know, you're uh, pre-diabetic or you're diabetic and you're trying to watch your sugar levels and things like that. Uh mayo and, and like really high fat foods could um uh, make that a little bit harder to do because of um they're still a source of uh for uh sugars and things like that. So when you make it yourself, you know exactly what's in it. <laughs> so I'm getting all my scraps up. Let me toss this here. That. And now, let's see if the chicken is soft. It's still a little stiff, but... Since I'm cutting it, because like I said, you I, you saw how thick those slabs were. It was like giant slabs of, of chicken breast. So um, I'm going to actually slice them down. If you have a meat uh, mallet, if you have chicken that, that's that thick, then um, I would say use your meat mallet to pound it to about, um, what did they say, like a half inch uh, size, because they cook more evenly. And then you can also like mash it so that it's an even layer so that your chicken cooks evenly and you don't have to worry about uh having uncooked portions or if you cook it thoroughly then you have burnt portions <laughs> or dried out portions so we're taking our potatoes out of the oven now because they've been in for about uh 40 minutes or so now and um we're gonna let them cool because uh you don't really want to handle hot potatoes ah, hot potatoes <laughs> So we're not handling hot potatoes. <laughs> and while that's going on, we're going to get our flour uh, situation together for our chicken. And so the way I like to season my chicken, I use my rosemary, some parsley. Um, I don't, I, I try and avoid like the salt. So, uh, but with this one, I'm going to do sea salt and it's just going to be like a little, like just a little bit. And, um, pepper. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be very lightly seasoned, very, something very simple, not like a whole lot of stuff going on. Um. We need our maple syrup. This is gonna be the this uh, one that I got, but this is for the potato. So um, make sure you got some handy. And you need eggs for our egg wash. Do, 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 do. I'm actually going to use that. And then we need a towel situation. Dry the sauce. This one's going to sink. And 
and yeah, let me try and clear some of these scraps. I was going to ham with that cabbage. <laughs> This cabbage even on the egg. <laughs> so let me move my seasoning off. Let me just get that there. I'm gonna get it in my bowl. Oh. Egg. So this this is actually where I'm gonna put the seasoning. I'm just gonna put the I put it cracked out a little bit better but i'm actually going to put the salt and pepper right on the chicken and um most of the season i'm, I'm going to put in the egg wash um and that's pretty much how i'm going to season the chicken because like i said the the point is to not over season the chicken because then you'll end up you'll end up uh cutting into the flavor of the things that we're doing on the side so um you'll see <laughs> so when i like especially when i was using like uh the blue apron recipes and stuff like that i'd be like why you got like stuff ain't even really seasoned like for the most part everything seasoned with salt and pepper and then like whatever other seasonings you need they send it to in like these little packets so uh for the most part the only season i i was responsible for was the salt and pepper but when I made the meal, like, it tasted great. It tasted, like, really good, like, how it was with not a lot of seasoning. So I started doing that, and I would just pick, like, a couple of different herbs and stuff that I would like to add. And um, definitely watch the salt content on stuff. So if I had to have salt, um, if I, I would usually do it where it's, like, a onion salt or a garlic salt or something like that. So I'm getting like two seasonings for the price of one and then I would do it very lightly. So if I wanted to have more of a garlic or more of an onion flavor, I would either use fresh garlic and onion or I would mix it with a garlic or onion powder. So that way I could control the salt content. So I'm not adding more salt to get more of the garlic flavor or more of the onion, <clears throat> more of the onion flavor. So now I'm going to add a little bit of parsley flake and i really like parsley because um it makes stuff look pretty <laughs> like it has its own you know little benefits and stuff but for the most part uh it really makes stuff look pretty and then we're going to add a little bit of this rosemary because that's going to be like i said this is what's going directly onto your chicken so you're going to want it to taste like how you want the chicken to taste and i'm actually going to do one quick little twist of salt and then a little bit of this pepper so this i this uh grinder hmm, i want to say i got this at aldi so it's it's a it's a mix uh it's a peppercorn medley so it's a bunch of different peppers and then it's you know it's in a grinder so you know you get to get fresh ground pepper and some stuff so i like my stuff my chicken just just a little a little bite not a lot i just thought about it i don't think she put my paprika in here I might be missing my smoked paprika because <laughs> I don't think the lady from the grocery store put it in there. I'm slightly disappointed now. Oh, well, because uh, the smoked paprika was actually for the sweet potatoes. And I've had smoked paprika and stuff before, and it's a different vibe. <laughs> so, uh, trust me, if you, can, if you can get the smoked paprika, do that. If not, don't stress yourself over it. It's not that deep. So here I come with this chicken and I'm just going to cut this into some smaller pieces. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not great at cutting nothing, so don't judge me. But uh, for the most part, you want to try and stay with the, with the groove of the meat. So you see how it's like that. So you want to cut it along that and it just makes it easier to cut. 
So, <clears throat> and then this part is just bad. That's why it's hanging on like that. Cut that off. Let me move this. I'm about to knock this egg everywhere. Get up under that flap. Get up under that flap. <laughs> and so you don't have to uh, cut strips this small. If you already have like some fillets that you think are a decent size, you can stick with that. Like I'm just doing this because like I said, this is a very thick piece of meat. And um, because I, I haven't made this with my air fryer before, I don't want it to be too thick and not, not cook properly. And so this makes sure that all of my pieces will cook better. And then also um, I like to use smaller pieces for lettuce wraps because it makes it more manageable so that you don't overstuff the, uh, the wrap. But you see how many pieces I'm getting out of this one chicken breast? This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This part is still kind of frozen. That's why I'm trying to actually just cut around it and I'm just let it sit somewhere and finish falling. Um, cause this, this is more than enough to, uh, to, you know, get y'all going with this recipe. And the chicken part is actually not going to take, uh, that long either because we're, well, I'll be air frying mine. So, uh, the one thing I have noticed with the air fryer is that it does cut cook times like tremendously because it's using like circulated hot air. Uh, uh, and it, you know, tends to evenly heat, heat stuff, so, I like that, I really like that about it, hey, Miss Evelyn, that chicken, look, it is huge, like, I was looking at those pieces in there, I was like, oh my goodness, like, and it was only, like, four chicken breasts in there, I think it was, like, eight dollars or something for the pack, not even that, maybe, probably less than that, and then, um, and it was, like, six pounds or something <laughs> like so and it was at aldi aldi is out here selling <laughs> selling this uh uh let foghorn leghorn chicken breast <laughs> so i'm just gonna rinse these off now and um dry them because the thing with uh with chicken and i would say even if you're frying whether you're frying especially if you're frying it honestly because the the grease and the water isn't isn't gonna mix i'm gonna cut the fat off of here too so uh also do that <laughs> cut the fat off you don't need it um but also when especially like if you're deep frying it but if you're frying it the the less water that's in the meat the crispier your food is going to turn out um so i'm going to rinse it and then i'm going to actually dry it with paper towels so i'm going to put these paper towels down to kind of like start with the buffer and soak up some more and i'm going to get some fresh paper towels and um and dry it once I rinse it. So this actually can go back into this bowl. No, but what I'm saying is, no, but what I'm just saying is, Okay, and a little tip about uh, chicken 
Uh, we all know it's it's a source of salmonella. So as you can see how I was cutting it on my bare cutting board, I actually soak my uh, cutting board in bleach after I'm done like with the, the chicken and all of that stuff on it because wood is extremely porous. I don't care how flat the surface looks, even if it's a brand new wooden cutting board, it is absolutely soaking up all of that stuff. So you want to make sure that you're uh, disinfecting it properly. And um, bleach is pretty much like the, the number one way to get that done in a, um, in, in a manner that's going to, you know, protect you. So uh, let me get this paper towel. Got my flour. Got my flour here. Um, I can grab my cornstarch. And the thing with the cornstarch is, like, it's really just there to help. It helps make the uh, make your your breading, your flour and stuff brown in a nicer way. So uh, you you know you you can brown it. I think uh, usually like people add like. Uh, depending on the oil and stuff that you cook it in, it browns it. Uh, yes, uh -huh. me too, Miss Ev. I love me some Aldi because they they definitely been stepping their game up with a lot of stuff, especially like the produce snap. And it's very affordable. So uh, if you got a local Aldi, definitely go and check them out and look through and see what you know what's even just available. Like even if it's not necessarily something that you would like, just go and um. And you know, purchase your food and stuff. At, if that's not where you normally shop, that's fine. But I would definitely give it a look. Salmonella is real. Yes, it's very real. So I'm talking these, and my food is nicely dried. And now I'm gonna bring my egg wash back over. And this is actually the plate I'm gonna be flouring my chicken on. So I'm gonna put. I have a. I have a half cup uh, thing in the in the flour. But I'm gonna put that. And so I like to flour my chicken on a plate because it just gives me better room to work with. Like sometimes I'll do the the uh, the Ziploc bag to like shake it, but you can't always get like all the cracks and crevices. Um, yep, healthy food and affordable. Yes, Ms. Ab. Um, so with the bag, you can't always get the cracks and crevices, and sometimes you, st you still need to manipulate the chicken to make sure it's properly covered. And so now, because like with this, you don't need a whole lot of cornstarch, like you don't want to like make it a, a situation. <laughs> I see, yeah, it's a situation. Um, and so we're just gonna like all of my little random uh scoops. So we're just going to do, because this is actually three teaspoons of scoop. So I'm going to do the bottom of it. And that's, that should give me like my third, so my teaspoon. And then it just goes in the flour. And then you just mix it like that. And so I'm just going to take a fork and drag a fork around in it for a little bit. And then remember those seasonings that went in the egg wash. You can use those in the flour as well if you want to. Um, I'm I'm only going to do parsley and um, a little bit of salt and pepper. Because like I said, you don't want to over salt. You don't want to. You definitely don't want to over salt it because uh, the the ADA. The, Amer the American is it Di Diabetes Association? No, the American Heart Association, the AHA, actually recommends that you uh, limit your sodium intake to, I think it's about like a teaspoon. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised that where like really high levels of sodium are located, like uh, carbonated drinks, like uh, pop, different types of pop, like especially colas very high in sodium nothing but empty calories sugar like high fructose corn syrup you want to avoid that at all costs like if you, if you absolutely can avoid it do it 
if you can't, okay, like, but definitely you want to keep that to a minimum because there's actually uh, evidence that uh, high fructose corn syrup in your diet actually makes you crave more uh, unhealthy foods. Like it, cra it, it makes you crave not only more high fructose corn syrup, but more processed foods, uh, fatty foods, things like that. So um, it has that that kind of feedback loop that that creates that situation. So um, I'm actually going to uh, do a couple of these at a time, and um, I can actually let it sit um, in the flour because that's actually going to make it more, uh, make it stick to it more. So it's going to actually make the flour cake up on it better, and that's that's what you want, especially. Uh, because I'm air frying mine, so I'm actually going to get my, my little air fryer racks and stuff together because I, I store some of the extra parts inside the uh, air fryer. <laughs> so I got to clear that stuff out uh, real quick. But, um, yeah, so I'm not sure you can see it. So I'm just sitting them there for now. Uh, nothing spectacular. We're still not doing nothing with the potatoes yet. They're still kind of hot. But like I said, by the time we get done, and we get our chicken uh, in the air fryer. We should have uh, two, seven, four. We should have what the uh, what we're what we're looking for for that for the potatoes. Okay. So this this my little my little uh butter lettuce that I got my uh butter butterhead lettuce I got from my rack. Cause I have some spinach leaves, but spinach leaves tend to be smaller, and um I would probably like cut up or um like dice the uh the chicken once I cook it, but then it might break a lot of the breading and stuff off. So you know, and um. Plus, I want to show y'all what it looks like to actually wrap it in lettuce. Cause, like me, per me personally, like I said, I like uh, spinach leaves over lettuce. But lettuce has uh, a it's a really good source of water. So if you're having trouble with your water intake, um, eat more salads with lettuce in them. I especially like iceberg lettuce because it has a really high water content. You can add watermelon chunks on top, and all of that stuff helps increase your uh, your hydration. Ms. Ellen says, question, Doc, could we use almond flour for those of us that are allergic to gluten or any other type of flour? Yes, ma'am. That's actually on the list for the, uh, as a substitute for the all-purpose flour. You can use a very fine uh, almond flour. Uh, they have like tapioca flour. There's all types of alternative flours out there and they work perfectly fine. Okay, and then I'm getting, let me put this away. I had to put my, my apple cider vinegar away before I knock it over. <laughs> then I want to knock it over. Okay. And so listening to the safety advisory on my air fryer, I unplug it when I'm not using it, so I have to plug it back in. And I'm actually going to... Uh, use this rack. So I'm going to take this one out. So, I'm gonna so this 
so in my air fryer, this is the rack I'm using. It's, it's just a little simple mesh rack. Um, I actually have like two of these for it. But this is what I'm going to be frying the chicken on. Um, I don't know. Do I want to sit it here and then transfer? Or put the, I'm going to just bring it over here and then one side. And then I'm going to get the them on there and then transfer. Um, let me turn this on. So I'm going to preheat it. So we're preheating our air fryer as well. And so uh, whatever your, your uh, so this is, this is my, uh, my air fryer manual. You want to follow whatever your air fryer uh, instructions uh, they give you for cooking like chicken and things like this. So I'm going to look up the prefect and um, I guess we can go with chicken tender. That sounds like that would be the setting because it has chicken breast but that's bone in. We don't have any bones, so we're going to go with chicken tenders. And for this, it says the setting is 360 degrees, so already set. And then we're going to, and it says for nine minutes. So I'm preheating it right now. You hear the hum? The hum. <laughs> so it's humming because it's, it's heating. When it's heating, it's humming. And so that's, that's that. And then once it finishes preheating, then I'm going to uh, finish battering my chicken. And we're going to dip it. We're going to uh, actually roll it uh, in some um, this cheese. See, nobody told me about the cheese. I almost forgot about the cheese. <laughs> so this first that might end up being double dip because I actually needed to mix the cheese with the uh this is with the flour. How are you? Hey. How you doing? How you doing? Sis? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So I have a quick question for you. Yes. Hey. Hi. He wanted to say something about your cooking. And you're doing a good job. Thank you. That's so sweet. Say so you're welcome. You're welcome. Me. You're gone. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip these over. Oh, it actually really did coat very, very nicely on there. So let me let me tilt this back down so y'all can see how this mashed on there. So it's it's a nice little even coating on there, which is which is cool. So I'm just gonna cover that and flip it, flip it good, batter it up. You know you should. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Don't don't sue me for my my random outbursts of, of, of remix songs. <laughs> we don't have no rights to nothing, so I can't sing the actual song. All right. <laughs> okay. So this is actually covered, and then I'm going to move this to the side so I can add the cheese. But I love my air fryer. I'm so I'm so glad. Like, and I had uh, air pop popcorn in it the other night. It was it was everything that I thought it would be. And then um, I have like my little my little. Uh, flavoring my little popcorn flavoring so i got the kettle uh ah thanks miss l so i'm glad i was able to get my my air fryer and especially like i said my my daughter she loves fried chicken like i'm t fried chicken yes you got her full attention 
if you got some fried chicken. So I wanted to uh, make sure that she had um, a health, you know, healthier access to her favorite food. Like it's cool that she likes fried chicken, but I, I wasn't a fan of the idea of her eating all of that uh, grease. So now she doesn't have to. So I got my chicken here. And like I said, like this, like to me, like this just looks like a pile of salmonella sitting here. <laughs> but chicken always turns out tasting so delicious. So, you know, I'll put, I'll put up with the temporary uh, salmonella. But uh, when uh, another um, tip when you're cooking chicken, if you have any cuts or, or like openings or anything like on your hands and stuff, you want to wear gloves. Because uh, the salmonella can actually enter your body through those cuts if you're handling raw chicken uh, without being protected and you have cuts and things on your hands. So uh, really, I'm not supposed to be handling it uh, anyway at all uh, without gloves. But I haven't had any cuts or anything as, as far as I you know as far as I know. So if you know you have a cut or something on your hand or your hand you know your your inner body is exposed in some kind of way. To the uh, chicken, you want to protect yourself um, as best as you can. So this chicken is actually about to get double dipped because I forgot to add the uh, the cheese. So this one might be a little bit crispier. This is confirmation. Confirmation for what, Miss Ann? Because you you show me slides. You like, oh, this is confirmation. I knew, I knew, I knew. Because Miss Ann, she 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 talks she talks to God daily. She gets those daily downloads. She's like, yep, yep. <laughs> I see, I heard, I saw. <laughs> he told me, he told me, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so we're going to flatten that back out. This actually uh, looks like it's like about to be so bomb because that, that egg wash is like really making this like stick to it so, so well. I'm, I'm just so excited. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so we got it covered. We're going to shake off excess, and then we're going to set it on the rack. And then we're going to take this piece back to the egg wash. Wash over me. Wash me, baby. Okay. Oh, here you can't see what I'm doing. Let me, let me, tilt, let me tilt you back down. So we, we're we're just we're just double dipping it. It's all right. It's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with a double dip. You can dip it again, again and again and again. And then I'm just covering it, patting it in. And you actually do want to pat the flour onto the chicken because that's what's gonna make it stick. <laughs> so you can press it. It's all right. <laughs> It ain't gonna hurt it. It's already dead. Okay, and then we're gonna flip it, flip it, make sure there's no excess flour, and then set it on the rack. Rack on rack on rack. Okay, some of this, oh, see, this one ended up catching some of the uh, thing, but whatever. We're just gonna dip that back in the in the egg wash as well, both sides. Make sure it's fully coated. See my fingers starting to get coated now too. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're just gonna spread that out, and then we're gonna boom, get it covered. Cover it the same way Jesus covers us, fully. Let me find out. I'm covered like I'm some crispy fried Parmesan chicken. Oh, oh. Lovely. That would be lovely. That looks amazing. I know. I, man, I'm telling you, I cannot wait to get this in the air fryer. This is about to fuck the nap. <laughs> and it's preheated. It's about to turn off on me now, though. I got like two minutes. <laughs> okay. So, actually, so now it's ready. It's, I got my, my air fryer preheated, and then I'm going to put this on the first rack. Oh, yeah, I did. 
And then we're going to close it. And we're going to set our timer for nine minutes. And, and it's going. Okay, it's in there. So I'm going to bring y'all over so y'all can see. So there we go. It's in the air fryer. This is all the stuff I, I keep in it. So I got my little rope. My little, uh, what's this, the, the, the rotisserie basket and the rotisserie arm for, like, if I had chicken and then it's a, a, a temperature probe so I can actually see, um, you know, if you're making, like, a whole chicken in there, you can put the temperature probe in the chicken and it'll actually tell you on the outside the temperature of the, the internal temperature of the food. So I'm like, that is, like, great for food safety, like, amazing. So I'm, I'm happy, I'm, like I said, I'm, that was the best purchase that I've made in a, in a while. Um, and it was only $150. So if you if you looking for an air fryer, they're trying to charge you all these crazy amounts and stuff, like shop around. Definitely shop around uh, before you let them uh, go upside your head with some stuff. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, really find what you're looking for. Because that, the one I have is a 14 quart air fryer so you can fit a an entire chicken in um comfortably and um and you can do like multi racks and multi levels of things so like if you're like uh dehydrating fruit you tend to have several trays worth of that so uh yeah i, I like it so i'm just getting these ready for when for when those come out and then we're going to get our uh our mashed mashed sweet potatoes going I gotta get a bowl for that. So we're gonna set this over here. And we're gonna The bowl. I was like, why did I turn over the place? I think that's where I get fat cracked. You can smell like chicken all up in here. You can smell the parmesan, like on the chicken, cooking. Hold on, let me check and see if her show is still going. Oh, okay. I had to make sure her show was still going because if it had stopped, she'd have been like, uh, <laughs> where you at? What you doing? And where my next episode? So this is what our baked sweet potatoes look like. They're still it's still like steaming at the moment, but it's it's cool. So I'm actually gonna get the peeler and that was one of the, the sweet potato eyes that was starting to come out. And then you see how you see how it just peels up? So I really just need the pillar to, you know, help break the skin and then you can really just use your hands, the fingers to peel that. And the reason why we're, we're peeling the skin, now mind you, the skin has a lot of good nutrients in it. So um, if you're not doing like a creamy type potato situation like we are, uh, leave the skin on. It's, it, it, unless you don't have teeth, it's not no real hindrance or nothing. But um, if you're looking for a real creamy type potato situation you're going to want to peel this off um because you're not going to be able to blend it down <laughs> and that's just facts and so it's actually coming off really really easily and it's actually leaving behind a lot more of the potato than if you were like to peel it before uh, baking it. So there's some pluses to this. I was told you could bake a cake. Yes, in an air fryer. Yes, you can do all of that in an air fryer. But you have to um, make sure you're adjusting the temperatures and things like that for the different type of cooking. Because it's not, it's not the same. Because um, like I think ovens and stuff use radiated heat. Air fryers use like uh, pushed uh, pushed 
hot air or something like that, like circulated hot air. So it's not going to cook in the same way that it would in a conventional oven. So you may have to adjust the temperatures, the cook times, all of that stuff, depending on, you know, based on what you're doing. And also the type of pan that you're using, all of that stuff makes a difference based on, you know, the medium. So you might have to, like, do some trial and error type stuff. Like, your first cake might fall in the middle or, you know, whatever. But, like, I would say, you know, play around with it before you just give up on it. This is... It's like, when I took it out the wrapper, everything was still kind of steamy. So it was, it was moving a lot easier. Now it's starting to dry. And it's like it's starting to, re, like, reconnect to the, to the potato, you know. Did I, oh, I keep forgetting about that. So I ended up uh, stabbing the, the foil into the potato. So I was supposed to stab the potato before I wrapped it in the foil. <laughs> that would have been way more helpful. But at this point, I'm just using the potato peeler to, to like peel out the, the skin parts that have the foil like pushed into it. So. Just be mindful of that, that you're not, like, eating foil. <laughs> I think I did that before. It was a long time ago. I haven't cooked my potatoes like that in a minute, like, in the oven. I usually just do a, a quick, like, pan saute or I'll boil them or something because I usually uh, eat them as, like, a, either an addition or a garnish or something like that. Like, I don't make the sweet potato pies and all that. My mom does that. So, I haven't, I haven't had to bake potatoes in a minute. <laughs> so, if you, if you haven't already wrapped your potatoes, like, stab them with the fork before you wrap them. Or you'll end up with little fork-sized foil pieces stuffed into your potato. So... This is pretty much what I got. It's not nothing like spectacular. Then we're just gonna drop that in there. So it looks like this other piece of chicken is about to be done. I'm gonna have to flip it. I'm gonna have to flip it some and um, put a little bit of oil on it. Cause it, it doesn't look like the flour is, uh... I don't know what her situation is. I think she wants I think she wants some water. <laughs> Hold on, I was back. I gotta get my daughter some water. Get her back situated. So now we're going to continue with these potatoes. You're my favorite person in the world. Aw, thank you. It feels uh, like leathery, though, like the, the potato. Ah, got that. Yeah. So while, like I said, while it's still moist and you know steamy under the skin, when once you start like once you catch an edge, it usually makes it like like mash off, like peel off of there. So until it dries, I won't actually be able to like drag this all the way across and then not like do some weird stuff to it but that's fine too like i said i'm not i'm not a perfectionist i learned like over the the years like cooking especially like once i started trying to cook new things everything not gonna turn out perfectly the first time but for me it was like as long as it tastes good because i had 
like a lot of like strange looking stuff. And I was like, well, I don't know. And I tasted, I was like, but it tastes really good. <laughs> like it would end up turning into like some, I don't know, mashy mess of like all kinds of stuff like mixed in. And I like, you can't really tell like what all was in it. But once you eat it, it's like, oh, I'm, I don't know how it looked, but it tastes delicious. You have a fan, sis. His name is King LJ. <laughs> hey, King LJ. A fan of my cooking? I just like cooking, though. I, I actually, I don't know. I, I guess I count this as, like, one of my hobbies because it's, like, I have like those uh personal development like journals and planners and stuff and they'll ask you like different like journal prompts and questions and it was like what like what's something that you do like for yourself that like you know that's a hobby or you know something that's fun that you know that you do and I was like cook like I really I really really enjoy cooking and sometimes like you don't realize it until like you have to actually like say what it is that you like some people be like oh i bike i like to hike i like to kayak like they like to you know pick all these like adventurous like active stuff and it's like it's okay if it's not active or like you know reading or something like that or you know watching movies or a certain tv show or something like i don't know it doesn't have to be something that other people like normally would uh would choose and that was like another box i had to you know get myself out of and honestly cooking like really like awakens the creative side in me so it's like even if i'm having like a creative block or issue with something else that i'm doing or creating in another area of my life like cooking really helps get those mental creative juices like flowing and i end up uh i might set out to make one dish and then i get like all this inspiration while i'm cooking to try this or do that or instead of you know baking this i'm I'm going to air fry that or, you know, something like different from what I would normally do. And it tends to turn out amazing. And um, and now you've also, you know, created new pathways in your brain. So now your brain is is thinking differently just from you doing something as, you know, as simple as creative cooking. So I thought that that was like a great benefit of this. <laughs> Miss Evelyn, yes. Oh, she has many fans. She is the best. Thank you. Y'all got me out here blushing and stuff. I don't know if I could blush and cook, but I'm about to find out today. <laughs> I'm not trying to fry the uh, the uh, the potato skin. It ended up flying into my egg wash. <laughs> And so, and even like just holding the potato like this, like you can feel how it's already like soft and ready to be mashed. I can't wait to uh, get this this mixed up. And so, basically, with this, I'm gonna just uh, chunk it. Like I'm not actually gonna mash it in this bowl because uh, I'm gonna have to blend it down to make it creamy. So I'm just the bowl is really just to hold it until I can clear all this, this mess away and flip my chicken. Thank you. All I'm doing is cooking the chicken. Where is the box? So I can make sure both sides are evenly oiled. And I'm actually going to raise the rack a little bit. Okay. This is a little too quiet. Okay, we're back on another. There we go. Nine minutes for the chicken. So they recommended nine minutes, but it's not done. Because like I said, this was some thick chicken. And um, I don't have a meat mallet, so I didn't... Um, 
try and make it thinner or none of that. So, like I said, if you don't know how to cook it, <laughs> you can cut it open and see if it's still pink in the middle. Then you know it's not done. Put it back in. It's all right. <laughs> the, the worst case scenario is that you eat uh, raw chicken. So, just make sure it's cooked. <laughs> Like, I don't know. It goes in once and then it comes out once. No, if you ain't got raw, cook it's okay. Just make sure it is cooked all the way. <laughs> oh, what is that? So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna sit the rest of these pieces in the egg wash to the side. I'm gonna end up finishing making these after the show. So while the chicken is finishing up, we're gonna get this mashed potatoes. Done. And then we can actually add those in the air fryer if you want to uh, brown them a little bit. You can actually add those on another rack in the air fryer while the chicken is cooking as well if you want to. That's actually what I'm going to do for dramatic effect. I'm still like, I feel like she didn't give me my, um, because I ran to the store beforehand to make sure I had all the stuff. And I even picked up some smoked paprika because we have regular paprika but not smoked paprika, and I didn't see it when I was taking all my stuff out of the bag. And so I'm slightly upset because smoked paprika has a slightly different taste. Like it has like this, I don't know, like I can't even describe it. Like you have to, you have to eat it to know what I'm talking about. So like if you do get, a, get your hands on some smoked paprika, try it and whatever you would normally put like regular paprika in. You gonna see it's like a, it's a whole different vibe. It's like a southwest, like I don't know where my Cajun chef go. It might even be like one of those type of Cajun situations, like something that's it's huh, <laughs> huh. <laughs> so now we're gonna because I, I think the oil already. So I'm gonna blend it first or add the hmm, still blend the blender with olive oil. Let me see. Yeah, so I'm going to get my little blender out. Because with this, like, if I had a submersion blender, I could blend it in this bowl. Like, I guess you could use, like, a, a hand mixer, but it wouldn't make it as creamy. So you would really need a submersion blender to get the creaminess. Or, like, how I'm using my, this is my shake blender. Like, I make all my shakes with this. So I'm just going to get my little cup, and I'm going to put a potato in there and <laughs> the oil and stuff that I need and I'm just going to blend it that way because the, the key here is to get it creamy like you want it creamy because the texture is going to make all the difference for this uh, for this recipe let me get my little my little janky blender cup and then for this we're not using the, the choppy blender so if you if you're using one of those cup blenders you want the flat blade blender this is what's going to make it nice and smooth and creamy this is how i made my butternut squash soup i just put it in batches i just scoop like two uh soup scoops into here and then i blended it down and i had one serving of soup and it was delicious it was a little spicy because i uh the the salt that we i'm uh, not the salt but the pepper that we had had like gigantic uh pour holes in it so when I went to shake some pepper on it a whole bunch came out <laughs> and once it was in there I couldn't get it back out so yeah I ended up with some super spicy uh, soup I'm getting I'm making sure I got all my little pork foil pieces out of my potato before I blend it um, that's all that's all I'm doing right now y'all sorry but I, I have a policy against eating foil <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Make sure we get make sure we get that out of there. Get that out of there. Okay. You hear my daughter? <laughs> I don't know, I ran into a little piece on this potato that feels like it didn't really get cooked, but we'll see. We shall see. Who's this? Okay, so we got our potato. I'm actually, I'm just gonna uh, 
get a little knife here and cut it into chunks into this wonder. So advisory, never point a knife towards you like I'm doing, but uh, I'm going slow and being careful, but yeah. Still, if you can avoid doing that, do, <laughs> do so. Do so avoid. So, okay, yeah, this one doesn't feel like it's, uh, it's all the way soft in the middle, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to start off with the choppy blade, and then I'm going to switch to the puree blade. Just for ease of use. And so with this, the we're, we're adding our olive oil, uh, nutmeg, uh, and cinnamon, and our maple syrup. So because I'm blending these separately in this little cup size thing, I'm actually going to do one third of each of those things. So I'm going to add a little bit of my oil. And uh, where's my maple syrup? Right behind me, if it was a snake, if it was a snake, it'll bit me. <laughs> so, did I open this yet? Okay, so you got to pull your protective seal off. I just assume everything has protective seal on it now. So, yeah, I might have to cut this. Smack it good. Okay, here we go. Yes, I will not be foiled by some bottle top foil. <laughs> this maple syrup smells good. Oh, and the whole thing came off. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to put, put a lid back on and I have my, my little handy dandy measuring uh, or guesstimation <laughs> guesstimation spoon so this is about one tablespoon Whoop. I'm gonna say it is so a little it went a little bit over but it's cool it's all going down the same way <laughs> that's what I said about that it's all going down the same way and this chicken is in here looking so good so good with the chicken. So I'm getting my cinnamon and I'm getting my vanilla extract again and a little bit of nutmeg. Did I get nutmeg? No, that's what my smoked paprika was for. So I'm using, okay, so I'm using the nutmeg and a little bit of the paprika because. Like I said, I think this lady lost my uh, my smoked paprika. I think she I think she decided not to put it in the bag. So I might have to go back up to the grocery store and be like, "Hey, lady, where my smoked paprika?" <laughs> so I'm gonna put. So I got my regular paprika, and I'm gonna put like you know little little dash, little dash dash in there, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of the nutmeg in it because I don't have my smoked paprika. So the nutmeg adds a nice little spice, and plus the sweet potatoes like it just goes with the sweet potatoes. And then we're going to do a little bit of the cinnamon. So the the, me the uh, measurements that I have on the uh, on the recipe in the uh, group, those are uh, guesstimations because essentially you're seasoning your, your sweet potatoes. So however, so that one drop. So however uh, you want it to taste or however strongly or, how, or however spicy. Okay, so this. This smells good. And it's actually still bubbling. But I don't know. Let me see. Let's let's see if it's done. I'm gonna have to check the metal and make sure. Because like I said, the, the chicken that I had was slightly uh it was still a little bit frozen. So like I said, you can never be too careful with chicken. So here we here we are with this. So I'm just setting this. Yeah, and so this is the chicken that we'll be wrapping up in our lettuce. She sounds excited. She don't even know what's going on in here. 
But I think she knows that there's there's some chicken around. <laughs> She's like, you making me some chicken? Are you making me some chicken? Okay, so you know what? I might actually could just do that. We're gonna we're gonna try the first one with just a little just a little flat uh, puree blend blender blendy the blendy blend. And so we're just gonna do this. It's gonna get loud, y'all. Bear with me. All of these chunks get down there to that blade so they can get all of them. It's getting thicker the more the more it, it blends down, so I want mine super, super, super creamy. Okay, and when you hear it uh, catch, you can you can definitely tell. That there's still some large chunks in there. You want all the chunks to blend down. I probably should have, uh, I could have cut another potato up in here because I think that's the problem. There's not enough uh, pressure to get it all down to the bottom near the blade. <laughs> chunk in the middle that's like really just trying to not mix in like, this was really a struggle for no reason just cooperate <laughs> yeah get in the mix get in the mix it's like it's always that one person that gotta be different <laughs> when we when we go to uh open this up try to get it off the lid it smells amazing though so this is this is what it looks like i think i'm gonna uh try and blend it a little bit more because it, it looks like there's still a couple of chunks in it but uh 
it's still nice and warm. So that's also why you want to let it cool because if you have to blend it, you don't want to put it in there hot. Unless you have like a glass blender and then you can usually blend hot stuff in there. But this is plastic. So. <laughs> Still some chunks in there. See, I'm glad I decided to make sure. <laughs> make perfect sure. Yeah. Okay. So take this out, looking all creamy and amazing. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Bam! Nice and smooth and creamy. So, we're going to get our plates together to get ready to collect some stuff. And so now, we get our lettuce. really going to determine what uh lettuce oh excuse me what lettuce that you use so it's okay if you want to use a different type of lettuce like as long as it's a green leafy like the whole point of this is to skip the bread like bread has about a hundred a little over a hundred calories per slice uh, if you're uh if you're eating like processed bread like white bread but uh whole wheat bread tend to be uh the serving size on that tends to be two slices, and you can usually get uh, about 100, 100 or 120 additional calories from two slices. So you can get a nice full sandwich from whole wheat, whole grain bread without having as many calories as if you were using white bread. So that's, that's always a good reason to opt for the, uh, to opt for a nice uh, whole grain bread. And plus, the, the calories that are in whole grain bread tend to come from um, a healthier source. So like I said, it's not necessarily the, the amount of calories or sugar. It's not sugar. The amount of calories or fat is usually the source that causes the issue. So if you're getting a healthy source of uh, calories, then it's fine. Like your body is going to respond in a positive way. So we've got our chicken hat. Oh, here, let me let me adjust this angle, and I'm going to move this bowl, because I'm, I'm going to finish all the rest of my serving off camera, but I want to get you all set up to see how it's looking. So this is Rap City. Rap, Rap City. Hey! <laughs> rap City. Chicken Rap City. So you can do it just like this. It uh, To me, it honestly doesn't require any condiments. If you want to put a sauce on it, you can do a sauce. If you want to take some of that Dijon mustard that we used earlier, you can put some of that on there. But stick to your serving sizes for your condiments because if you do that, a lot of times the, the calorie uh, increase and all that stuff tends to come from the garnishments, like the, the, uh, the condiments, sauces, and dips and things like that tend to be very rich and really high in calories. So be mindful, be mindful of your serving sizes when it comes to those. And um, we got our coleslaw. So for me, um, I was just gonna put my coleslaw on it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the side. But of course, when I eat it, I'm actually gonna put my coleslaw on top of my wrap, and um, that's how I'm actually gonna eat my wrap. So this is my coleslaw, and so don't be shy with it because this is your vegetable. So uh, the way your plate portions should uh, should go is you want at least half of your plate to be vegetable. So this this is as vegetable-y as it's going to get. <laughs> it's a head of cabbage and some carrots. <laughs> that tastes really good, mind you. <laughs> Very good. 
very fresh. Very fresh. Oh, I'm walking around. Let me put these back a little bit. So. And then my little dollop of soup petals. If I can get it to get out the cup. Here. Come on. Ease on down, ease on down, ease on down the road. <laughs> and so this is this is your, your serving. Like you don't want to overdo the serving with your starches because like I said, they tend to be a higher source of uh, carbs and starches. So unless you're uh, pretty active, um, this, this could add a slowing uh, effect of uh, your digestion of this. <laughs> So it can give you the itis, <laughs> but this is everything. And then like, if I had my smoked paprika, I would have sprinkled that on there, but instead I'm just going to sprinkle my regular paprika on top of my potatoes. And this, this is it. This is, this is the lunch. Look at that. Someone come look at this. <laughs> it looks so good. Salih K. I will sis. Our son is autistic and we cook all the time. Yes. And like I said, like cooking, people don't really look at cooking like it's a, uh, like, I don't know, like it's a creative activity, but it absolutely is. It's absolutely um, a creative activity and it definitely does. Uh, spill over into other areas of your life and um, the the more involved you are in your cooking the more active uh, you'll be with your with your own personal health and nutrition and um, and I realized that that the more stuff I learn how to make on my own or you know at home for myself uh, the more control over, I had over what went into my body so um, that made it uh that much easier for me to reach different types of uh, health goals, uh, personal fitness fitness goals, things like that, because I had direct control over uh, what I was eating and, and how it was being prepared. So uh, that that is everything. This really isn't a, a two-hour meal. It only took that long because I had to cook everything separately to walk you through all of the steps. But like this stuff, I usually do all at once. Like, <laughs> for the most part, like, a lot of this stuff, you know, can kind of be overlapped in May. And then plus now I have a giant bowl of coleslaw in my refrigerator. So I actually have something to go with, go uh, over several meals. So um, this kind of even counts as, like, food prep. So um, who knew you could turn lunch into food prep? <laughs> And then, um, yeah, so that's that's all for today. Um, I'm still trying to get uh, get that vegan chef. I'm still trying to uh, trying to run her down, but she had to work, and um, and she's also she also serves in the armed forces, so she uh, she has other obligations. So as soon as I can get linked up with her, I am going to get you all one of her vegan recipes. And if I have to uh, pre-record it and then just post it to our, our uh, YouTube channel, then we'll just have to do that. But I am going to get you all a vegan recipe. If you know of any other vegan chefs or vegan foodies who want to come on and share some recipes with us, please send them my way. We are searching for you. I love to get a nice variety of, uh, of food types and, um, and uh, meal types and stuff going so that people have options. And me personally, I, I do uh, a variety of uh, diet options. So I have vegetarian meals or I have like uh, meals, I guess you could say are uh, would be keto friendly, <laughs> like not even on purpose. It's usually just just a, uh, an inspiration I get at the moment. And that's what I decide to eat. And then it just kind of fits that category. But um, I like to try different things and um, and, you know, meet new people. So. Uh, the the soul food Cajun food chef, please hit me up so we can get you on here and we can get uh, get some some of that knowledge out here to the people. If you are a, a business, uh, if you do like catering, if you're doing uh, meal preps, 
um, please, please, please contact me about uh, ads because, as you can see, we have no ads that we play during this show because we don't have any businesses that, you know, that have paid for ads or that have contacted us about uh, ad, uh, ad sponsorship. Um, we also are uh, raising money in our uh, GoFundMe. I don't have the link, but like I said, you contact us. We will definitely send you the, uh, the link for that. It will be posted in the uh, Rock, uh, Rock Truth Cafe Live Facebook group so that you can donate to our GoFundMe to help us realize this dream, this inevitability of uh, a physical cafe brick and mortar uh, with healthy food choices for the community. Um, I believe it's, it's going to be based in the Gary, Indiana area. At least the, the first one is because it's going to be a chain. I already see it's going, it's going to be a chain. They're going to be popping up. And, um, and it's going to have a wonderful, uh, relaxed ambiance that is geared toward not only inner wellness, but outer wellness so that you can go through your day knowing that, that you've done something good for yourself and positive for your community. So tune in next week, 12 p.m. Uh, Central, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we'll be doing our dinner uh, recipe. Uh, I believe it's going to be a, a casserole. So uh Tune in for that. <laughs> I may have to uh, have a, a finished one for you so you can see what it looks like done because I don't, I don't think it will have enough time to cook it all in in the show. But I'll definitely go over how to prep it and get it get it going. So thanks for tuning in. See you next week. <laughs>